form a potentially toxic legacy of Superstorm Sandy. The dirt on your property could be contaminated because of Sandy and you may not realize it. Walt Kane here right now with the Kane in Your Corner investigation that you will see only on News 12 New Jersey. Walt? Well, Eric, the issue here is that Sandy brought a lot more than just wind and rain to New Jersey. It also brought lots of flooding and in that flood water was a laundry list of things. Everything from oil to sewage to hazardous chemicals. Scientists say when the waters receded, the toxins were left behind. Worry about the, the children who play in the grass, the children who play in the soil. Regina Coyle is afraid of what might be lurking just beneath the surface of her garden. I'm afraid of the lead, I'm afraid of the possible arsenic, those kind of things, and entering in the food chain. This is why she's worried. Last year, Sandy sent floodwaters surging through the streets of Little Ferry, and that water wasn't clean. Fuel, industrial site materials, all of these materials can be picked up by the floodwaters and transported. According to the environmental group Climate Central, Sandy spread more than 5 billion gallons of sewage in New Jersey. That's enough to fill more than 250,000 swimming pools. A small amount of some contaminants can make people quite ill. We've seen as high as triple what a regulatory level says would be acceptable. Robert Weitz runs RTK, an environmental testing company. The children go out to play in the yard. They may be playing in lead. They may be getting asbestos on them. So what exactly should people do? Health officials in Bergen County are offering mixed messages. There's no specific data that, that specifically addresses the soil in these areas after the flooding. On the one hand, they're offering no official warnings or alerts. But unofficially, they advise anyone in areas that flooded to plant their herbs and vegetables in containers, not in the ground. So I'd like them to plan on using containers for two years. Rutgers says you should do it, but it's not an official recommendation. So that, that's not worth anything to us. But when it comes to New Jersey's most contaminated areas, our 113 Superfund sites, the EPA says there is no evidence Sandy caused contamination to spread. At this site in Lawrence Harbor, soil tests showed contamination remained in the fenced off area. It did not make its way to this playground or other public areas. But the agency admits at most Superfund sites, it only performed visual inspections. It did no soil testing. They may not want to know the answer that the testing may give them. That may come down to money. It can be an expensive proposition to do a cleanup or to cover an area that's been contaminated and sometimes they may not want to have that information. But when it comes to her yard, Regina Coyle wants all the information she can get. So we arranged for RTK to test her property and another property in Little Ferry for contamination. Coyle admits she's a little worried about what they might find. I'm hoping that uh, a lot of the, the bad things are not there, but if they are, that's when I'll have to go back to work. And we should point out that I have the test results right here, and I will have those for you tomorrow night here on News 12 New Jersey. Now, Walt, the expert in the story says that you should wait about two years before planting. Is that how long it would take for any contamination to uh, subside? To Yeah, you know, that's, that's the problem, is that it sort of depends. That is a decent general rule that uh, Joel Flagler from Rutgers is, is citing there, but it sort of depends on the contaminant. There are certain contaminations. Uh, lead, for example, that are lighter than the dirt, and so they don't necessarily sink through and disappear. They, they may sit on top indefinitely. So what else would you say people could do if they're worried about their soil being contaminated? Well, obviously, the, the one suggestion is uh, it, to plant in raised beds. Uh, the other possibility is you could put fresh soil on top of the, the soil, and they say about eight inches will usually get it done. The problem with that is if you're going to try to do an entire yard, obviously, it's, it's not cheap. And if you're in an area that's pl prone to flooding, then all it takes is one more flood and you're right back where you started from. And of course, we're talking about the potential of a public health issue here. But what, what does the State Department of, Envi of Environmental Protection have to say about this? We have reached out to the DEP a couple of times. They have no opinion on this. They say they have done no testing and they have nothing to say on the issue. Now, the U.S. EPA, the, Depart the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, says that their testing has uh, indicated that they don't believe it's a significant threat, as we saw from the Superfund issue. But a lot of other scientists disagree, and as you saw in the, in the story, a lot of that's based on visual inspection. Mm -hmm. They take a look and see whether sediment appears to have moved. They don't necessarily do soil testing, because soil testing is expensive. All right, uh, well, we look forward to seeing part two of this tomorrow. Walt Kane, we thank you for that. Meanwhile, for gardeners who do live down the shore and they're wondering about how Sandy may have affected their soil, experts say each area varies dramatically. Soil contamination may be very different or much less depending on where you live. Their sandy soils um, drain very quickly. 
and we don't have contaminants getting locked up in the soil as long, and we didn't have the same nature of flooding. So every county is different. A flood versus says toxins from neighboring industrial sites and sewage plants also need to be considered. Well, the story is generating a lot of comments on our News 12 Facebook page. Terry Ann says, check Keensburg. My parents live there and their grass and trees are all dead. John says, people panic too easily. No one ever said anything after any other flood. He lives in Lodi and had four floods in 10 years in Beach Haven West. John says, the waters are fine. Denise says, they should check our lawns and wane after Irene. I refuse to plant a garden anymore after flood waters we're here. We encourage you to continue to sound off on our Facebook page. Uh, plants in your yard may show signs that you have contaminants to find out what to look for. Plus, some tips on container gardening for edible plants just to be safe. Watch the full interview and gardening tutorial with Joe Flagler from the Rutgers Cooperative Extension. You can find that information by going to Optimum Channel 612 and News12.com.